Chapter 456, The White Mask Although the majority of practitioners came to the remains saying that they had no expectations of obtaining the relic themselves, who would not fancy the possibility? It was the same with the lottery, many buyers still hoped to get lucky one day and secure the top prize, though oftentimes they did not show it. However, on this piece of barren land, broken magical weapons were a common sight. After they had finally made it underground, they were again thrown off their bearings by the complicated labyrinth ahead. Then, they went through the first marathon under the chase of bugs and a second under gargoyles. What kind of hellish experience was that? In the end, a few days had passed but nothing useful was gained. Exhausted, everyone laid on the beach, wondering what they had come for. Besides, there were more than 10,000 practitioners at the start but now, fewer than 8,000 survived. Although their deaths could not be considered as extremely tragic, the number of casualties was not insignificant. Some observant individuals began the search for Nojoa to Kenobu once they were back in the real world. They wanted to know the ending to the fight between he and the madman-looking glowing teenager. If he lived, the young man dispatched by the Heavenly Network was not as scary as expected to be. But soon they realized that Nojoa was nowhere to be found, meaning the legendary Class B figure of the Collection of Gods would have probably perished in the hands of the Heavenly Network. Not 100% certain though. Nojoa Takenobo is a hider and maybe he has concealed himself knowing he is no longer as strong as before. After all, there are multiple targets on his back not just from the heavenly network alone, someone speculated. True. People liked to strike others when they were down. Furthermore, the collection of gods had made themselves a few enemies in the cultivation realm due to their obsession with relics. If the Phoenix Society was known for their arrogance, the collection of gods had a notorious reputation for madness. Pay attention to information on the collection of gods after we go back. We will need to be more wary of the Heavenly Network if Nojoa Takenaba really fails to return. It was not a joke. At the moment, two Class A's of the Heavenly Network were held back in their country due to the vast size of their territory and the relative shortage on manpower. However, it remained uncertain how powerful the Heavenly Network truly was and its efficiency in churning out a new generation of future experts. As a matter of fact, it was a common issue faced by many big organizations. The population of one's members spelled for the prerequisite of a grander arena. Ask the cruise ship to come and pick us up. We should not stay here for long. I certainly did not expect that a new Class A has risen without our knowledge, Howard ordered. He had to inform the Saint and Hades about the happenings in the remains. Now, the saint's ascension to Class A had to be done as soon as possible since the Phoenix Society was under immense pressure. But his subordinate got back to him with distress written all over his face no sooner than he dialed a satellite call. Good news and bad news. Howard cast him a cold look. Speak. The good news is, the saint has already ascended to Class A at the North Pole, replied the man. Those around were shocked but there was an additional hint of relief on Howard's face. The saint had always been his role model and now Howard would have to cover a great distance so as to catch up with him. However, with their own Class A, the Phoenix Society would be even stronger. Howard waited for the bad news. And the bad news is, our cruise has just been sunk by a despicable water-type practitioner. Not only us, all big organizations have encountered the same. Howard was stunned for a long moment before he quickly realized that the one from the Heavenly Network was of the water type. Where did he go? He had gone. From Howard Miller's distress, plus 666. Howard was certain that this young man was even more of a pain in the ass than Lee Xiao. Bloody hell. He ran around picking fights with beetles and gargoyles before the relic had even shown up. After he came out, he sank other people's ships too. Lunatic. Lu Xu and the rest had returned to their safe house. Having had his fun in the remains, Li Yixiao did not mind at all not having the relic himself. Besides, now Lu Xu had finally understood why Li Yixiao was so poor. 
Despite his vow to get richer, Li Yixiao had embraced freedom to the fullest and threw money to the back of his brain once he entered the remains. Lu Xu had nothing to say. Moreover, he guessed Li Yixiao had probably forgotten about the relic too. But Lu Xu did not plan to hide from the heavenly network, because besides Lu Xiaoyu and himself, Li Xianyi, puppet master Tiger Ji and the Blood Spirit were all aware of the whereabouts of the relic. In addition, even if Lu Xiaoyu, Li Xianyi and himself kept the secret, puppet master would surely let the cat out of the bag if it wanted to create some drama. There were too many uncertainties. By then, how would Nye Ting and Li Yixiao think of him? As of now, the heads of the Heavenly Network had been rather honest with him. Even Nye Ting had purposely left Earl's Divine Water to him. Besides, he had secured the relic by fair means and there was nothing to conceal. Lu Xu spoke, the remains. But he was immediately interrupted by Li Yixiao. When you report back to Nye Ting, don't say we have never even seen the relic, and don't mention what I did inside too. You just say we have done our best, but unfortunately, the luck is not on our side. <laughs> How about that? I learned it from movies. Besides, think about it, we are not at fault at all. How can we interfere in a fight between two class A's? So, it is pretty understandable that we didn't get the relic. Lu Xu cut in, his face darkened, I have the relic. Burp. Li Xiao froze. Then, Lu Xu took out the pale mask, which rested quietly in his hands. Yet, it opened its scary mouth again and shot towards Li Xiao at once. Never had he expected that the mask would automatically attack humans. Horrified, Lu Xu immediately stuffed the mask back into his seal. <laughs> Don't take it too hard. But this is the relic. Maybe it is a disguise. That's all I know. Still shocked, Li Yixiao looked at Lu Xu in disbelief. You actually got the relic. Then why did the old man run off? I thought he was provoked because his relic was stolen. In any case, Li Yixiao would hunt down whoever stole his relic. But now, Li Yixiao suddenly became skeptical recalling the condition of the mask just now. Brother, do you know something that I don't? Hey, we are on the same team. Share it. Chapter 457, Going Home Things that you don't know? Lu Xu thought for a while before replying, Actually, there is something I need to tell you. Li Yixiao's face lit up. See? I'm smart. He's finally telling the truth. What is it? The first thing that old man will do after he comes back is probably look for you. He has been doing so for two days in the remains. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 999. At the moment, there was not much time for concern. Li Yixiao started packing up at once. Hurry up. We are going back in a minute. Sure. Then, Lu Xu pulled Lu Xiaoyu aside and mumbled, I thought this mask attacked me because the puppet master asked it to. But now I realize it is not like that. I'm guessing it attacks all humans automatically except me as it is suppressed by the fire inside my heart. Lu Xiaoyu shot him a brief glimpse. Then go figure it out yourself. Then she went to binge on Naruto. She could not wait any longer to watch her animes after so many days in the remains. Things like competitions and relics were none of her interest and she had entered the remains just for Lu Xu. Distress crept into Lu Xu's mind. There was no one he could discuss with. Besides, he could not entrust the truth with Li Yixiao either. When Lu Xiaoyu's eyes were glued to her phone screen, Lu Xu suddenly leaned over. Why do you think the remains did not close when the puppet master got the mask? Lu Xiaoyu rolled her eyes without even looking up. Do you think Naruto will become the Hokage one in the end? Lu Xu pondered for a minute. Probably will. Wait a moment, Lu Xiaoyu had diverged from the topic. Now he understood that Lu Xiaoyu shared no interest in the conversation. Having returned to his room alone, Lu Xu took out the white mask for a closer inspection. 
In fact, instead of the obvious questions, he was more curious about why his inner flame could subdue the mask. Who else would have a flame blazing in his heart? Lu Xu had been burying the confusion deep in his heart in an attempt to get over it. Be it the sapling on his palm or the fire, it made him feel different from everyone else. As though, they were implying that he was not human at all. There was one possibility. Maybe the puppet masters, like blood spirits, could enter the remains freely with the white mask serving as the key. Even blood spirits could preserve their last breath in the remains and grow into a class A today. However, the key could not let them out due to their non-human identity. Therefore, the puppet master wanted to use Lu Xu himself as a medium whose contact with the mask could end the remains. Perhaps the puppet master had even intended to kill Lu Xu in one go, but never had he expected what happened next. The low-level human, unharmed, actually made the mask his own possession. But that did not bother Lu Xu too much, since he had successfully closed the remains after all. Holding the white mask on his palms, Lu Xu studied it carefully. Made of unknown materials, the hard-looking item actually felt like cotton in his hands. After a long hesitation, Lu Xu finally placed the mask on his face. Yet, it did not go as smoothly as it did for the blood spirit. To his surprise, the mask struggled to leave his face and refused to cooperate. But when Lu Xu infused it with his celestial powers, he was astonished to realize that the mask was immediately tamed with even a tad familiarity with him. Was his celestial map really so domineering that it could suppress everything? In the past, it worked on spirit qi and the yin yang kinship of the three. Now, it could even control this piece of creepy relic? Lu Xu could feel that the mask was perfectly compatible with his skin. In a flash of thought, his face in the mirror changed into a thinner version of Li Xiao. Lu Xu stared at himself for a long while, speechless. How would he have expected that the mask could not change the shape of his face? Then what's the use? What the hell? So if a fat man wanted to turn into a thin one, he would become a wider version. Were there any reliable and useful magical weapons in the world? As a matter of fact, there had been some misunderstanding on Lu Xu's side. The White Mask was a sacred artifact that belonged to the clan of blood devils, who, consisted purely of blood, could transfigure into any form possible in accordance with the mask. Thus, its inventor had never given much consideration to whether the mask was capable of changing the body structure of the wearer. As a result, it inconvenienced Lu Xu. Taking a deep breath, Lu Xu took off the mask. At the moment it seemed that the greatest use of the mask was to disguise his true face. Back in the remains, Li Yixiao had called him by his name in front of Meng Jingchan and Evan's team. Thus, Lu Xu would not be surprised at all if his name appeared on the search list of various big organizations across the world the next day, hence, a disguise would be very necessary. Otherwise, he might be pursued by a few experts interested in him. What a miserable life it would be. Lu Xu started calculating his gains from the remains this time. First of all, it certainly had to be his divine water, which had increased in size by more than ten times. It had expanded to as big as a swimming pool after devouring the blood spirit. Moreover, with its own weapon spirit, its lethality towards individual targets had even reached the level of the black dragon spear. Speaking of which, this was a much more productive way of nurturing the divine water as compared to Earl's painstaking efforts. Following the same vein, one had to stop being too picky with their food if they wanted to gain weight. The second greatest gain was the large income of distress points. At the moment, points from big organizations including the Phoenix Society were gushing in like snowstorms. At the current rate, the fifth star in the third nebula had already been ignited with even some excess. The success had to be attributed to Lu Xu's creative use of the sun mirror and his carvings on the stone walls. Now, he had become an expert at gaining distress points. What an achievement! Lastly, Lu Xu suddenly felt that there was one more accomplishment that was worth mentioning, that it was his first time to have admirers. Li Yixiao's voice interrupted his thoughts. Come on. 
Let's leave before it is too late. Lu Xu rose and held Lu Xiaoyu's hand in his. Putting her phone back in her pocket, Lu Xiaoyu looked up and smiled at Lu Xu. Pattaya's sky was still blue as usual, as though undisturbed by the practitioner's revelry. Gazing in the direction of Ko Chang Island, Lu Xu smiled. Goodbye. Suspicious, Lu Xiaoyu cast him a glance. Who are you bidding farewell to? Humph, no one. Lu Xu, you've changed. The pair walked into the distance, until their figures blended in with the landscape and the sky above. Chapter 458, Back to School, Part 1 Half a month after the end of the Pattaya Remains Luocheng Foreign Language School The afternoon sun of autumn caressed people's cheeks, gentle and cozy. Trees were gradually turning yellow. Withered leaves danced in circles on the floor as gushes of wind blew through the streets. Luo Chang used to be heavily industrialized until the start of this century. However, on the brighter side, the air quality had slowly improved ever since. A group of students were playing basketball on the rubber-floored court, which was located in between the main gate and the classroom building. Thus, as boys were playing ball, they could also look at the pretty girls walking past the court. How convenient! Outside the three-point line, a handsome boy leaped into the air, leaned back and attempted a jump shot. Yet, due to his insufficient strength, he failed, and the ball flew off its path. The ball spun out of the court, about to hit the head of a young man who was passing by. However, in the next instant, having sensed the imminent danger, the young man grabbed the ball backhandedly. The scene caught the attention of students on the court and also those rushing to their classrooms. His reaction was so fast and smooth that it almost seemed like a natural reflex. Then, under people's astonished stares, the ball came to an abrupt stop in his grip. No one had seen something so unbelievable outside of videos. The basketball players were stunned for a long moment before shouting over, Hey! Pass the ball back. The young man hesitated, before pressing the ball inwards with both of his hands, grinning back. Shouldn't you apologize first? Then, everyone could only stare as the ball slowly turned oval, before finally exploding into a layer of plastic skin. The young man threw it aside and continued walking to the classroom block. From Zhao Shuai's distress, plus 666. From Li Yang's distress, plus 666. From. Bloody hell. What kind of person was that? So what if he was a meta-human? Yes, we should have apologized first, but you did not have to be so arrogant either. In fact, many athletes were metahumans too. Besides those who were fond of violence, many metahumans were also passionate about sports such as basketball, soccer and baseball. Just a while ago, two strength-type metahumans appeared on NBA Summer Season Talent Show. Their jumping ability and speed were unmatchable for other human rookies. In addition, as basketball fans, they were even equipped with commendable playing skills. The union had once tried to ban Metahuman's involvement in basketball games. However, they were caught off guard when another NBA superstar awoke to his power, and the union was still in a heated discussion of how to deal with the matter even till today. Some people proposed a basketball match specifically for metahumans. But how big should the court be? Should they classify the matches into Class A, B, C, D, E, and F as well? Sometimes, when the cultivation world overlapped with the commoners, the effect would not only be interesting, but also hilarious. At the moment, those students felt rather grumpy about the incident. Who knew there was such a burish person from some Daoyuan class? Wait a minute, there was one indeed. But he had disappeared for a long time. Class 2, Grade 12 There was still half an hour till afternoon lessons. Now, many students were engaged in a discussion on the Kochang remains. In fact, the number of remains that had opened thus far had already exceeded double digits and each and every one of them would result in vehement conversations. For example, they talked about who got the relic, 
what kind of skirmishes broke out inside and which organization had the strongest fighters. Gradually, websites had been set up specially dedicated to the collection of information in this aspect. However, the knowledge available was too little and such news was for entertainment only. But maybe one day there would be an official ranking of powers for the cultivation realm. Perhaps the Golden Foundation and the Darkness Kingdom already had enough information. The news said that two men from our heavenly network entered the Kochang remains this time. One of them is our principal Li Yixiao. Yeah. Didn't you see how many complaints were launched against him on the Golden Foundation Forum by individual practitioners? Allegedly, he rolled in over a thousand gargoyles and ran around causing trouble. I think it's probably true. Based on his awful personality, I'm sure he's capable of doing that. Why have you read the article on the man named Xi Wei? He's from the Golden Foundation, a Class B Thunder-type metahuman. He actually held back the gargoyles for three minutes on his own. When he got out of the remains, he had yet to recover to his usual state, a girl shouted, he's so handsome based on his photos. Jealous, a boy replied, you girls are so naive. You like whoever you see. Suddenly, their conversation was interjected, eh, look. This post says that the identity of the other Heavenly Network member that went to the remains is still unclear. So far they haven't found any useful information. But there have been some clues and the search is still ongoing. Another person was puzzled. So Principal Lee was not accompanied by a Heavenly King? In their impression, it would only be sensible if both of them were Heavenly Kings, who were believed to be the strongest in the country disregarding other factors. An unfamiliar Class A has just emerged. And he stole the relic from the Golden Foundation on his first appearance. Wow. Suddenly another person asked, speaking of which, all Class A aptitude geniuses went to the capital together for progress report. Now, Chao Qingxi has successfully ascended to Class C and she is already back at school. But why isn't Lu Xu back yet? Everyone froze. Right? Lu Xu had never come back after the summer holidays, and his only appearance was during the rank presentation. Then, he had gone missing again after he received his major badge. It felt very strange that a mugger who went to lessons on time every day suddenly disappeared from class. They also heard that their form teacher, Chi Qingyan, was very worried about his end-of-year bonus points recently because Lu Xu's absence had dealt a severe impact on the average performance of his class. <laughs> Do you think he's the one who followed Principal Lee to the Ko Chang remains? Someone said half jokingly. But then he realized that everyone was stunned in place. Right, there was indeed a possibility. The rapport between Li Yixiao and Lu Xu was widely known. Besides, as a Class C, Lu Xu was perfectly powerful enough to compete in the overseas remains. Despite this, no one was willing to believe it. <laughs> How's that possible? Why would they send Lu Xu instead of the genius, Chao Qingxi? Chapter 459, Back to School, Part 2 Actually, they simply refused to believe that Lu Xu could follow Li Xiao to overseas remains. Their perception on overseas remains was about the same as that of individual practitioners, that they were equivalent to an upper-class party, accessible only by the elites. In other words, people would fall in love there and might even climb up the social ladder rapidly with the good items obtained inside. In addition, they could also expand their network. It was an overly simplistic and optimistic view because their network might stab them in the back too. For instance, bloodshed between practitioners was not rare in the Kochang remains, and individual practitioners were mercilessly enslaved by big organizations to serve as canaries in the mine. It taught everyone a lesson that the cultivation world followed the rules of the jungle. Thus, despite Lu Xu's good luck to be promoted to Class C, it still seemed unrealistic that he could leap into the international limelight in one shot. Many people attributed other people's capacity in making money and promotion as luck, but to Nye Ting, true strength played an equal role in one's ability of constant awakening. Why did our principal Li not do anything good inside? 
I have seen countless complaints against him on the forum but not a single post speaks favorably of him. Besides, it seems that he didn't plan to look for the relic at all. Principal Lee is a strange man. Wah, have you seen these photos? Coral, the pearl of Northern Europe. How can one be so pretty without makeup, a girl said, her eyes beaming with admiration. Then, she showed the photos to other boys, who stole a few more looks without uttering a word. Undeniably, she was gorgeous. In the photos, Coral appeared to be looking for someone in the crowd on the beach, but she failed. Thus, in the last few photos, disappointment emerged on her face. Maybe every male across the world who had seen the photo was starting to wonder who Coral was looking for. At this moment, they heard a voice from the door of the classroom. Hey, everyone. Long time no see. Startled, everyone turned back to see Lu Xu grinning at them from the door. In the past, this low-key boy had rarely smiled so broadly, but he could not win everyone over with that. From Lu Li's distress, plus 666. From Yi Lingling's distress, plus 282. From Li Yuching's distress, plus 211. From Lu Xu's face lit up at the influx of points. What a warm welcome party. Now, he was feeling guilty for not giving them any souvenirs from the remains in return for their enthusiasm. However, given the infertile land of the Kochang remains, the only possible souvenirs that Lu Xu could think of were skulls under the altar of Inferno Blood Devil. How auspicious. Thinking of that, Lu Xu truly regretted it. If he really had done that, he might have been able to ignite the sixth star. Instantly an awkward silence fell over the class and their heated conversation was cut short abruptly. Lu Xu glanced over at Lu Li, eh, chairman, you've got your hair back. From Lu Li's distress, plus 666. Lu Li's pathetic hairstyle had become luxuriant again. After Lu Xu returned to his own seat, Jiang Shui whispered, smiling, recently. Many good quality magic rich lands have emerged in the city due to the regeneration of spirit qi. Perhaps Lu Li has also figured out the reason for his hair loss and thus his family has spent a fortune to get him a new magic rich land. Coming back, how's your trip to the remains? When everyone was still guessing the identity of Li Yixiao's company, Jiang Shui had already learned the truth from his family. Moreover, it had been some time since the end of the Ko Chang remains. Jiang Shui even knew that Lu Xu had the relic. By right, anything obtained from the remains was supposed to be surrendered, including Li Yixiao's black dragon spear. It was only returned to him after the standard procedures, which were of high importance inside the system. But Lu Xu had encountered something different. Except for the fact that Nye Ting had personally phoned him to prepare materials for a report, he mentioned nothing about the relic. Unsure about whether it was due to the peculiarities of overseas remains, judging from now at least, the superiors of the Heavenly Network had silently agreed to let Lu Xu claim possession over the mask. Just like the Seal of Lands, the mask too had a door that could not be pushed, pulled or dragged open. Now, recalling his experience in the remains, Lu Xu replied, pretty good. But I believe I can do better if given a second chance. Jiang Shui's expression changed. Why was he giving a summary? In the meantime, Lu Xu became the center of private discussion. People were interested in where he went and his sudden return. Even his act of exploding the basketball at noon had gained admiration from younger girls in the school. Now, in spite of negative comments about Lu Xu's upstart-style cultivation journey, no one could deny his Class C capabilities. In the entire Luo Chang Daoyuan class, only two people had attained Class C and his military rank was even higher than most officers. In addition, Chao Qingxi was only awarded captain after her ascension to Class C, which made it clear that major rankings were not automatically granted to all Class Cs. Usually, they would only become captains without significant military contributions. Thus, strictly speaking, every member of the Heavenly Network and Daoyuan class in school had to salute to Lu Xu first, except for Li Yixiao. Before his return, they could take it as Lu Xu had gone elsewhere but not the remains. 
But now, the pure coincidence between the ending of the remains and his reappearance, plus Li Xiao's return to Luo Chang just a day before, left little room for doubts. Nonetheless, Lu Xu had come back to school not because of his eagerness for knowledge. Instead, Zhang Yutong had informed him that the preparation phase for admission into various special practitioners' colleges had been pushed forward. Chapter 460 Strange Incidents in Luo Cheng In just half a year's time, most practitioners' colleges were in a rapid process of construction. Take the one on Beimang remains for example, they were almost done with its external structure. Admittedly, nothing was impossible with enough money and effort. It was said that it took colleges fewer than three days to finish building their foundations. With sufficient allowances, the internal class C Earth-type metahumans from the Heavenly Network were able to meet construction deadlines in an extremely efficient manner. Additionally, many metahumans from other types were also directly employed in the manufacturing industry. The Heavenly Network had certainly exploited their entrepreneurship to the fullest in the construction of the seven colleges. Besides, practitioners in the Heavenly Network were relatively more down-to-earth. Many self-proclaimed geniuses from other countries had demanded a holistic improvement in their living standards. Similarly, as depicted in some Chinese kung fu novels, masters liked to be carried around on sedan chairs by eight beauties so that they did not have to walk themselves. Was it because they looked good that way? Not really. They were just posturing. Despite knowing about the fast construction process, Lu Xu did not expect the admission phase to arrive so early too. Only the day before, Zhong Yutong had called him in the afternoon and said, the exams will begin after Chinese New Year next year. I suggest Major Lu return to school for studies as soon as possible so that you won't disgrace yourself by being allocated to basic security forces. Maybe he was referring to autonomous admission, Lu Xu thought as the timing coincided with that of various universities before the regeneration of Spirit Qi. The newly built practitioner's college was chosen as their exam venue. Of course, its name was not the University of Beimang, as Lu Xu had expected, but Luo Xin Cultivation College. Lu Xu felt sorry as he could not pretend to be a Peking Yu student anymore. Actually, he would still be looked upon as a graduate from Luo Xin Cultivation College. Although Tsinghua and Peking University represented the pinnacle of academia in China, those from cultivation colleges were definitely no commoners either. After a long hesitation, Lu Xu asked Zhang Yutong on the phone, Do I still have to sit for the exam? Since I have shed my blood for our dear country. From Zhang Yutong's distress, plus 666. Back in the Beimang remains, Zhang Yutong had been annoyed several times by Lu Xu though he had been pretty satisfied with this young man ever since. Now, sharing the same standard of capabilities and considering the fact that Lu Xu had helped him beat up Hao Jichao, Zhang Yutong decided to explain with as much patience as he could muster. The attendance at the exam is compulsory for everybody. I have shed my blood for our country. From Zhang Yutong's distress, plus 666. You still have to sit for the bloody exam even if you have shed your brains. Zhang Yutong was shivering in fury. Okay, listen to me and go to school. If your grades are not high enough, be prepared to report to the security formation. Lu Xu clicked his tongue. Wait, honestly speaking, don't you think? I'm pretty suitable to be a professor at a cultivation college? I can teach them how to stick to their initial aim even under verbal attacks. Ka, the phone call ended. From Zhong Yutong's distress, plus 999. Therefore, it seemed that he had to attend the exam no matter what. Fortunately, Lu Xu was never afraid of exams. Yet, one thing was for sure based on his conversation with Zhong Yutong, that they would become security guards against metahuman troublemakers if they failed to pass the assessment. So, Jiang Shui was correct. Truth be told, Lu Xu fancied the career prospects of security guards. At the very least, they could be sent to black markets for security orders, and black markets were a good place. Then, another call from Zhang Yutong interrupted his thoughts. I will send you a document, 
not for your actions, but your information as a member of the Luocheng branch of the Heavenly Network. You will need to cooperate if any assistance is required of you. In addition, you need to get your attitude right. Lu Xu was displeased. My attitude is flawless. I've shed my blood for our country. From Zhong Yutong's distress, plus 999. Then, he opened the document to see a report on strange incidents in Luo Chang. The first story had already compelled him to draw a startled breath. Recently, Luo Chang was seriously plagued with rats. Repeated reports had been filed against groups of rats robbing convenience shops, snack stalls in particular. Moreover, according to information given by Heavenly Network members, the rats, well organized, preferred to commit crimes right after midnight. Their operation was swift with no hesitation. As shown by videos filmed by surveillance cameras, the culprits had a different appearance from ordinary gray rats. They could be easily recognized with a pinch of black fur on their head. Moreover, they entered the stalls after breaking the anti-theft windows with their teeth. Then, they would carry packs of snacks away in their mouth instead of consuming them on the spot. A few suspects had been arrested by the Heavenly Network and they had ample reason to believe that those rats had gained preliminary intelligence. Despite the general growth in intelligence of animals across the country, which was associated with the increased spirit qi concentration, the issue in Luocheng was particularly jarring. In the second document, all residents of a large residential estate in Luocheng had the same dream together on several nights. Every time after they fell asleep, they would encounter the same group of people asking them whether they wanted digital coins. Others claimed that they were asked about Chinese chives or going to heaven. But all of them shared similar contents. Lu Xu suddenly felt enlightened. No wonder Little Fury was unusually obliging when he came home a few days ago. It seemed that it was feeling guilty for what it had done. Thus, Little Fury was still copying scriptures as punishment before Lu Xu went to school. In class, Jiang Shui shot Lu Xu a glance. Be prepared. I think the superiors of the Heavenly Network is probably going to entrust you with important missions. All big families in the country had acute instincts. Eyeing the vacancy on the position in charge of foreign matters, they knew Li Xiao had been sent overseas mainly to give other people headaches not for the true interests of the organization. Currently, the main agenda of the Heavenly Network was placed on reinforcement of internal powers and the establishment of a world-recognized image. Thus, it made perfect sense to send Li Xiao for such errands. But there was no way for the Heavenly Network to give up all overseas relics in the future. Therefore, they were bound to have a new person manning the position. In fact, Nia Ting's decision to dispatch Lu Xu overseas this time was hardly understood by many. Given his young age, they did not deem Lu Xu as a suitable candidate to shoulder such heavy responsibilities, despite his sensory skills. As a matter of fact, he was the only candidate available. Yet, everything changed when they found out that Lu Xu was more than just a neighbor to Li Xieni, and that the young man had obtained the relic himself. Even the heavenly kings had chosen to remain silent on this matter. Everything was negotiable for the good of the country. Lu Xu was stunned by Jiang Shui's comment. Important missions? What kind of missions? Will I get higher salaries? Jiang Shui paused for a long while, thinking about a possible reply. Probably, I suppose. From Jiang Shui's distress, plus 199. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And then we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 